I do ask, Lord, that our hearts would be open to hear what you've got to say. Not what I've got to say, Lord, but what are you saying to us? What are you saying to us through your word? What adjustments are you wanting each of us to make in our lives? Lord, we can't just be sitting under your word and nothing changes. Because your word is powerful. Your word is living. Your word is able to, to, to bring change. And I ask this morning, we ask together that change would happen in our hearts. That we wouldn't be like the man that James talks about who, who looked at himself in the mirror and then immediately went away and forgot what he looked like. But Lord, we're going to be here, those who hear what your word is saying, what you are saying to us personally. And then, Lord, we want to lay hold of it. We want to respond to it. We want to make whatever adjustments you're calling us to make so that we might live in the grace and in the favor and the blessing that you have for each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm going to be talking this morning, or the title of my message is Following Hard After God. Now, if you're a Kiwi, then I maybe I should be saying following hard after God. But um, hopefully you know what I mean by hard. And the emphasis there is on hard. And it might seem like a strange title. But the truth is we can follow hard after many things in life. Eh? It could be our careers. It could be money. It could be prestige. It could be our hobbies. It could be sport. It could be entertainment. And the list could go on and on. And so if that is true then of those things in our lives, how much more so when it comes to God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not so. Mm -hmm. But I think it is that many believers are content to just follow God. Mm -hmm. But why not? Or why aren't we willing to follow hard after God? And to get to know Him? Mm -hmm. And to pursue Him with everything we have? Mm -hmm. Now in Luke chapter 9... We come across three men who were keen to follow Jesus, but on their terms. There were some conditions they had before they would truly follow Jesus. And so the first one we see needed to know where he was going to lay his head that night. The second one wanted to first go and bury his father. And the last one wanted to go and say goodbye to his family before he followed Jesus. And that might seem like pretty reasonable requests, eh? But I think if you also know the day and the culture and the times that, that people lived in, that burying your father could be weeks and weeks of preparation and funeral services and mourning and everything else. And Jesus responds to them like this, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Luke 9 verse 62. In other words, he's saying, when it comes to following me, it's got to be all or nothing. There can be no half-hearted following. Yeah. We either follow hard, or we don't follow at all. Mm. Now, I hear a few mmms this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I hope for some amens, because this is not going to be a polite message. Good. It's not going to tickle your ears this morning, I can promise you that. But what I can equally promise you, it's from God's Word. It's the truth of God's word this morning. And as I've waited on God for, for this thing's been stirring for a few weeks now. And as I waited on him this week and I began to prepare around this, I got nervous. <laughs> um, how to empty the church. <laughs> preach about following hard after God. But you know what? I'd rather preach the truth and empty the church than have to stand before God one day and say, I really tickled their ears. Amen. They really like me because I said some nice things. Mm -hmm. I want to be faithful to God That's good, and man. faithful to the word that he's put on my heart for this morning. All right, so will you work with me? Yes. Will you listen? Yeah. Will you open your heart? Mm -hmm. Can you choose right now and say, God, I'm not going to be offended by what I hear this morning. Amen. Honestly, can you say that? You say, <coughs> I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to take offense. Mark's not preaching at me. Mark's not looking at me. And if I look at you, it's not because I just got to look at someone. And I'm not pointing fingers. But I tell you, the cry of my heart is, God, I want to follow you with everything I have. That's good. I'm tired of playing second fiddle or right. my relationship with you being second fiddle to all yeah. the other things in life. That's right. yeah. Now, you know, Paul knew what it meant to follow hard after God. Mm. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8, he says this, I consider everything, everything, not just some things, 
But I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. That was Paul's greatest pursuit, eh? was to gain Christ in increasing, ever-increasing ways, in ever-increasing measures. In fact, for him, everything else was considered a waste compared to his pursuit of God and his call and his kingdom and everything that God asked of him. And so Paul's a great inspiration because he gave himself to this end. Because for him, there was nothing more important than knowing and seeking and pursuing his Christ and his Lord. Nothing else. And yet the truth is that for many believers, can I say, our pursuit of God ends once we've come to know God. Mm. Isn't that true? Yeah. And then we content to settle for that measure of knowing God or that measure of our pursuing God. We feel like this pursuit is over now that we've found Him. And I say found in inverted commas because we don't find Him as much as He finds us. But somehow we think that's the end of our pursuing Him. We found Him, our eternity is secure, now we can just sit back, arms folded, and enjoy the ride. And I hope for what you're going to hear this morning, that that is not what God has called us to, friends. Why do I say that? Because God wants more. God wants more. God has so much more that He has for us, that He wants us to be involved in, that He wants us to give ourselves to. And mediocrity, let me tell you, is not in God's vocabulary. Ordinary is not part of God's word to you and I. Everything is about extraordinary. Everything is about a full measure. Everything is about an inheritance. That's good. Beyond our understanding or proportions in any way. And so now listen, this is what God says to His people. Notice His people in captivity. The Israelites were known Babylon. Jeremiah 29, 13. This is what He says to them. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. He wasn't talking to the uncircumcised people. He was talking to his people. But friends, there's a key there. You will find me not when you seek me casually, not when you seek me half-heartedly, not when you are nonchalant about me and, my, and your relationship with me, but when you seek me with all of your heart. That's when you'll find me. That's when you'll know me, you'll experience me. That's when you'll understand this great plan and purpose that I have for you. That's right. The Amplified puts it like this. Then, with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me. Notice that, require me before you require of me. Require me as a vital necessity and you will find me when you search for me. Not the things about me, but when you search for me with all your heart. And friends, can I say to you this morning, that's following hard after God. That's following with a deep longing and with purpose and with passion and with intensity when it comes to our relationship with God. Now the psalmists often exhibited something of this desire. And can I say even desperation for God. And in Psalm 42... Verses 1 and 2, the psalmist says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? That's good. Let me ask you this morning, is that still the cry of your heart? That you just cannot wait to connect and to commune with your Father in heaven? Does your heart still pant for God? For the person, for the presence, for the purposes of God? Or is it kind of just, a hey, case sarah, sarah, what will be, will be? Or is there desperation for the things that he has for you? You know, the church at Laodicea started with this heart. But as time went by, so their desire for God began to cool. And Jesus has to admonish them for their lukewarmness. Their lukewarmness and their love and their longing and then their desire for God. Yeah. Revelation 3.16. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why let me remind you, it's not how we start our race that counts. But it's how we finish it. It's true. In other words, how hot are we for Christ and for His kingdom at the end of our race? When we take our last breath, when we stand before God. Not to say, wow, God, did you see how well I did 54 years ago when I came to know you? I want to come running into His presence. Amen. Not crawling over the finish line. Spent. Uninterested. But passionate and excited for my King. Mm, now the truth is I've met many fiery Christians at the start of their race you know when they're wide eyed about all that Jesus has saved them into but then as time has gone by so they've begun to neglect or if not neglect have become complacent about what Christ has saved them into mm. yeah. and the result is they've become lethargic in their pursuit of Awesome what God has saved us out of. Absolutely. Sin and all that stuff. But I want to tell you what's even greater is what He saved us into. Yes. Yeah. And yet we so often neglect that. And what Dee shared this morning about stop looking back, looking behind, mm. reminiscing on the good old days or whatever those might be, bad old days. I don't know. What about what God's doing today? What about what He has for your future? Is that what you're pursuing and going after? Or are you still... Living in that. I think for some people this morning, honestly I feel as God says to you, break camp. Break camp. Break camp out of your mindsets, out of your thinking, out of your past, out of your disappointments, out of your failures. Break camp. Because it's time for you to advance. It's time for you to step up and step into this incredible inheritance I have for you. Mm, that's good. That's good, man. But you know the good news is that God is so patient with us. He eh? is. You know, even in the Laodiceans' lukewarmness, Jesus invites them, urges them to repent, to repent of it and to go yeah. on. Yeah. And we read that in Revelation 3, 19 and 20. He says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Mm. Please don't ever forget that. It's out of his love for you that he will sometimes challenge you, mm. rebuke you, discipline you. Mm. Because you're a son, because you're a daughter. Mm. He doesn't do that to strangers. Yeah, yeah. I cannot discipline someone else's child because they're not mine. Sometimes I'd like to. <laughs> but as a father, I have every right to bring discipline to my children. Why? Because I love them. They're mine. And it's the same with God. And this is what he says there. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Don't get angry with God when he rebukes and challenges and, and disciplines you, please. Actually, just appreciate his love for you. Yeah. And then he says, so be earnest and repent. You cannot repent unless there's an earnestness in it. Otherwise, it's just remorse. Gee, I really am going on some rabbit hole trails this morning. But I trust God is in it. Trust is in it. Because there's a big difference between repenting and being remorseful. You know, Judas was remorseful. After he messed up and he got the sturdy coins. And he went and hung himself. He was full of remorse. The difference is when Peter messed up by denying Jesus, he wept with repentance. Big difference. Earnestly repent, he says. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, speaking to his people, the church. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And I want to say to you this morning, no matter how cold or how lukewarm we've become, there's always a way back with God. Yeah. And that way is opening your heart again to intimacy with Jesus. That's good. Where you truly want Him, where you desire Him more than anything else in your life. Friends, that's where God wants to take us. Now, key passage this morning is Psalm 63. Normally we get to the key passage at the beginning, but I had to hopefully lay a bit of a platform here, or a foundation. And in Psalm 63, and we're going to read the first eight verses here. This is David, and he says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. There's that word again, earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a 
dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. And because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Wow. And that verse 8 in the Amplifier puts it like this. My whole being follows hard after you and clings closely to you. You want to know, you know where I got the title of my message this morning? There it is. My whole being, he says, follows hard after you and clings closely to you. What a challenge. Eh? What a challenge. Because to be honest, my soul, in fact, my whole being doesn't always follow hard after God. I don't, I truly, I don't always cling closely to Him as much as I would want to. Or cling to Him for all I'm worth. If I have to be honest. Because like you, I'm prone to distractions. I find it easy to chase after other things. Yeah. The wood, the hay, and the straw of life. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, those things have little or no eternal value at all. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say it is the cry and it is the desire of my heart to follow hard after God mm -hmm. because I know that there is nothing more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. There is nothing of greater value than giving my best and giving my all yeah. to my God. You know, this is how the psalmist puts it in Psalm 73, verse 25, when he says, Whom am I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Or as another translation says, And being with you, I desire nothing on earth. Wow, I'm not there. But oh, I want to get there. I want to be in that place where he is my absolute focus, my absolute priority my absolute passion, and that the things of this world take a second, a distant second to God. Because the truth is that when He is our contentment, you know what, we then can, like Paul, say that we are content in all things. That's right. But only when He is our contentment. Mm -hmm. yeah. When He is our focus, when He is our passion and our priority, the truth is we have no need. We don't have any desire then to be chasing after worldly things, the temporal things of life. The things that, yes, may be here today, but are gone tomorrow. But here's a key. We can only desire and pursue God. Well, let me put it this way. We can pursue God only because He first puts the urge within us to pursue Him. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Without that, we, we would pursue, be pursuing everything. Remember, Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And so the impulse to pursue God originates with God. But the outworking of that impulse is our following hard after God. And then it's up to us to fan that desire into flame. It's up to us. God's put the impulse there, the desire in us. So what are we doing with it? That's right. Are we ignoring it, sitting on it, squandering it, or are we fanning it into flame? Now the truth is there are many facets to following hard after God. But for me it starts with our souls thirsting and panting for God. Let me read again Psalm 42, this time from the Amplified Version, in verses 1 and 2. It says, As the deer pants and longs for the water brooks, so I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. I want to say that's what thirsting for God looks like. Eh? Mm. And the psalmist would not be satisfied until he had drunk deep at the fountain of life. And so that's why this is the starting point. In our following hard after God, it's our desire to drink deeply of God. 
Remember what Jesus said in John 7, 37. Let ev- anyone who is thirsty come to me yeah. and drink. Yeah. That's good. Don't go and look for drink in other places. Don't look for satisfaction in the wrong places. Don't look for fulfillment outside of Jesus. Yeah. And so let me ask you this morning, as I ask myself, how thirsty are you for God? Mm-hmm. Be honest with yourself. As you sit here this morning, how thirsty are you for God? Because the truth is, if you're not thirsty, you won't come and drink. But on the other hand, if you are thirsty, and if you'll respond to the God's urge within you to drink from the well of life, it's then that you get satisfied. And find satisfaction, and find meaning, and find fulfillment in your life. It's you responding to that God urge within you to seek after Him. Again, you might say, well, how do I do that? It sounds so noble. Yes, I want it, but how? Well, it happens by practicing and by delighting yourself in His presence. Which means then prioritizing Him. It means making time to be with Him. It's about fellowshipping with Him. Communing, communing, communing with Him. It's about enjoying intimacy and friendship with Him. I spoke about that last week and some of that even the week before about being friends with God but here's another important question is that a priority for you? well here we this is how we know let me ask another question how hard are you following after God in your private times with Him? in your devotion in your personal prayer time in your personal worship, in the reading of God's word, just sitting at his feet, communing and conversing with him through the course of the day. How's that happening? How's that going in your life? Because the truth is, if we let this slip, my friends, we let everything slip. If this ceases to be a priority in our lives, the truth is we'll never have the hunger, we'll never have the desire to go hard after God. Why do I say that? Because I've been there. I've been there. I've played the religious game. I've done all the right things, ticked all the boxes. But my heart's been far from God. As a pastor. Oh, sorry. New Zealand. That means just an emphasis of, can you believe? That's a reality. You've been there as well. Yeah, she's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so following hard after God starts with our souls, but then needs to progress to every area of our lives. When it comes to our commitment to God, when it comes to faithfulness, when it comes to attendance, even at church, when it comes to things like following hard after God with our time and with our talents, with our treasures including our finances and the way that we are rich towards God. Not just towards ourselves or even others, but rich towards God. What about in the way we follow hard after God in our service of Him? In our ministries? In our good deeds or the good works that He's called us to? And the list could go on and on. It's good, Mark. Let me ask you, again, as I ask myself, how hard are you following after Him? Not just in your relationship with Him, but also in doing His will, Mm. in being obedient to His Word, in stepping out and fulfilling the call and the purpose that God has given to you, put put before you, and called you into. The truth is we cannot follow God passively, casually, or half-heartedly. If we're going to follow, then we must follow both faithfully and forcefully while at the same time clinging close to him because god wants us to be those who are forcefully advancing his kingdom while at the same time dwelling in the shelter of the most high to be those who are pursuing him and his purposes yes with fervor and with passion and yet continuing to rest in the shadow of the almighty it's not one or the other It's not either inward or outward, it's both. It's both our souls and our bodies, 
Both our souls and our lives actively pursuing and following hard yeah. after God. Yeah. Yes. Not one or the other, it's both. Mm. Now here's a news flash. You might not want to hear it this morning. Mm. But to follow hard after God involves effort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it involves discipline. Mm. There is sacrifice, there is cost. It's true. And some hard work. But you know what? It's not a striving that is done in our own strength. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Rather, it's us laboring or struggling with all his energy, mm. which so powerfully works in us. Colossians 1:28. But we have to understand that with the call of God comes things like responsibility, comes diligence from us, mm. determination, perseverance, effort, hard work. Mm. Especially if we're wanting our lives to count for God. Mm. If we don't want them to count, well then ignore everything I've said, honestly. If you just want to kind of coast through life, making no difference, having no effect on, on society or on the world or on the generation you find yourself in, then please ignore all of this. But if you have a heart to say, God, I want to make a difference. I really do. You haven't just saved me to take me to heaven. But you've saved me for a purpose. You've saved me to be light and to be salt and to be your fragrance. To be your ambassador in this world. To be a fisher of peoples. Yeah. And if that's true, then I can't just cruise through life. I can't see your kingdom as a, as a stroll in the park. It's got to be more. And you know, Paul knew something of the pain, the sacrifice and the effort involved in following hard after God. Of him beating his body and making it his slave so he wouldn't be disqualified from the prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He knew what it meant to strain towards what is ahead, to press on towards the goal to win the prize. Mm -hmm. Philippians 3, 13. He knew what was required to fight the good fight of faith and to take hold of the life to which God had called him. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Mm -hmm. Remember what he says to the, to the Colossians in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1. He says, I want you to know how hard I am contending. Some translations say, how hard I'm struggling for you and for those of you in Laodicea. Mm -hmm. The same Laodicean church that had become cold and lukewarm. I'm contending, I'm struggling. I'm not just assuming things. I'm not just hoping it will come right with you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my all. I'm giving my best. I'm, I'm investing my time and my resources. I'm going to come and visit you. I'm going to do whatever I can so that you can go on and go on. Man, that's following hard after God. Yeah. You know, when Paul says in Philippians 2.12 to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, let me tell you, he's telling us to do something where, where the expectation is for us to be actively and strenu strenuously involved in the working out of that mm -hmm. salvation. Yeah. Because God doesn't sit or doesn't expect us just to sit back or hope that he'll do it. He'll work it out for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there are things that we're called to do, things we're called to get involved in and give ourselves to. And that's why running your race, finishing your race, mm -hmm. keeping the faith, will require effort, yeah. Yeah. discipline, determination. It's not going to just happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, the difference, can I say, between finishing strong and just finishing is how much effort was put into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How much discipline was required? How much sacrifice were you willing to give? Because that's the difference. As I already said, I don't want to be one just kind of crossing the line by the skin of my teeth. I want to come running over that line. Yeah. I want to finish this race strong. Yeah. Strong. Mm -hmm. Not just finishing. Yeah. Just kind of making it. Good, and you know where there is no effort, where there is no intentionality, you know, it may not affect your salvation, but it will affect your rewards. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you'll end up missing out on the life that God has called you. And not just the life, but you'll end up missing out on everything that God has prepared for you. He's prepared you for those things, but He's also prepared those things for you. And the truth is, some things will come to us. But then there are other things that we have to go after. There are things that we have to actually fight for. Yeah. If we're going to live in 
When God promised the Israelites Canaan, let me tell you, when they crossed that Jordan River, they must have thought, that's it, we're in. No more battles. Until they hit Jericho. And then they hit Ai. And they realized that if we're going to live in the promised land, that which God has prepared for us, it doesn't mean it's going to just fall into our laps. We have to go after it. We've got to fight for it. We've got to occupy and inherit what God has said. Possess, I should say, not in necessary it will inherit anyway but there's a difference between occupying and possessing yeah it's easy to occupy that's right they occupied the promised land but god called them to possess it and that sometimes means you're gonna have to fight for things yeah you're gonna have to hang in there contend keep trusting god keep believing what he's spoken what he's promised Mm. get those dreams again revived in your heart to believe what he said So if we're going to live in the blessing and the inheritance God has for us, it will necessitate us following hard after God. Mm. Yes, both inwardly with our souls as we thirst and we long for the person and the presence of God, but then outwardly also with our lives as we intentionally chase after that which He has promised to us and has called us to, His great will and His purpose. Mm. But I'm sure you would agree with me that at the end of the day, there is nothing else. In fact, there is no one else that is worth following hard after but Him. Because everything else is a chasing after the Lord. It may bring some satisfaction today, and maybe even tomorrow, but not for eternity. Accept His will and His purpose. To take hold of Him, even before we take hold things that he's taken hold of us for. Mm-hmm. To pursue him with everything we have. Mm-hmm. I told you that's not going to be a delicate message this morning. Mm-hmm. But I want to tell you I've been challenged with this. That's good. Mm-hmm. Because it's so easy just to, to get into our into our safe countries, eh? live in our safe spaces. Mm-hmm. And just go through the <laughs> Christian motions. Tell you, God has put things in your heart mm. that He wants to awaken again this morning. I don't want to keep going on in that, but I felt that during worship. Mm. Dreams that He's that put in your heart, things He's spoken. Maybe you've become complacent with it. Maybe you've given up on it. Maybe you've forgotten that. Mm. Maybe you sound too old for that now. That was yesterday's dreams. No, God says, Hey, I want you to be a Caleb in my kingdom. Yes. That includes the ladies. Mm. I want I, I have a hill country for you. Yes, and you may feel like you the end of your age, or the end of the call, or you feel like it's, it's time for a younger person to come through. And yes, maybe that is true for them, but not for you. Yeah. Because God has called you to something. Yeah. There's a mountain He wants you to possess. Yeah. Mountain is. I trust that this morning there's something of that Caleb spirit that would rise up within you. That would say, I can do it. Yeah. This can-do attitude, God, you've said it. I'm going to believe for it. I'm going to hold on to you. And I'm going to run my race with perseverance, with passion, with, with, with desire, with enthusiasm, with purpose, with intent, because you're so worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Should we pray? Yeah. Yeah. I've got goosebumps. God is here. God is speaking here. Saying goosebumps equate to God's presence, but I want to tell you he's here this morning. He wants you to do business with him. He wants to renew a fresh desire in your heart. Oh, for the day where you look back and you know that you panted after God, after his will, after his kingdom. But that panting has become less and less. The urgencies become less and less. This morning, Lord, I ask that for each one of us, that you would stir again a passion. You would stir again a zeal for you and for your house, for your kingdom and for your call within us again. Lord, we don't want to be mediocre in our walk with you and our call. 
We don't, we've never been called to be ordinary Christians. Lord, you've called us to be extraordinary. You've called us to be passionate. You've called us to be zealous about you and about the things that you have for us. And this morning, Lord, my prayers for myself, <coughs> for my brothers and sisters here this morning, that you would release and awaken a renewed thirst within us, a renewed longing, a renewed hunger for you and for your kingdom. That, oh God, we wouldn't be content with where we're at. We wouldn't be satisfied with what we've seen or what we've been involved in, or even what we're involved in now, because we know with you there is so much more, so much more, exceedingly, abundantly above things that we could ever ask, hope, or imagine of the things that you have for us. But Lord, if we're going to lay hold of them, we understand there is a need to truly follow hard after you. To follow hard after you with everything we have. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that even now you would come upon us and you would awaken your life your spirit within us. Awaken us, Lord. Awaken us to this great call, this great purpose that you have for us. And that, Father, we would follow you with our souls and we would follow you with our lives like we've never followed before. That truly, my soul, my whole being follows hard after God and clings closely to Him. Father, let that be true for us, we pray in Jesus' name.